Before you bring a new animal home to the farm, you're either going to spend hours upon hours upon hours researching that animal, or you might get a little excited and just dive right in. Either way, you're still going to end up with a few really hard lessons learned. Howdy folks, Reagan and Megan with the GWP Homestead, and these are the five things we wish we knew before we got goats. If you're new around here, we live on about 10 acres here in Kentucky, raising our family and trying to grow as much of our own food as we can. We were really excited when Heather at Sage and Stone Homestead asked us to be a part of this collaboration geared toward beginning and intermediate homesteaders or really anybody who's bringing a new animal home to their farm. As part of this collaboration, we're talking about a wide variety of animals, chickens, ducks, pigs, cows, rabbits, bees, and of course, our goats. I'm gonna leave a link to everybody else's channel in the description box below. Make sure you go over, check them out, let them know that we sent you, and watch until the end of this video, and I'll tell you how you can have an opportunity to win some free stuff. These are the five things we wish we knew before we got goats. I'm Megan, I'm the main animal person here. All the animals here are my fault besides the chickens which started this whole endeavor and they're completely his fault. Something is always going to go wrong at the worst possible time. And that's specific for goats because they're just little suicide machines, but they also goes livestock wide. It never fails when you're the busiest, something's gonna go awry. The fence is gonna go down, the goats are gonna get out, someone's gonna lose their mind. One of the biggest examples for us is I had to stay overnight in the hospital with a family member Came home, was home for a couple hours. It felt like next morning I'm gonna about to go back to the hospital. Again, I come outside and one of my goats had completely prolapsed while giving birth. I was wrong on her due date. It was completely awful. It was the worst possible timing. I was stressed out and exhausted. And now I have to deal with a goat that is completely prolapsed. I've had another goat give birth when I had COVID in strap and it was like 20 degrees outside, right? Was it 20? Yeah. I was around 20. It may have been colder, it may have been warmer, it didn't matter. I felt like crap and I was out here trying to dry babies off so they didn't get sick. You're really distracting. <laughs> Stand still. You're gonna... Problem is, I can't I can't sit still on camera. I can't talk and uh, I'm also distracting when I stand up. So If I look like I'm doing something weird, it's because I'm having to pull a lead rope that's attached to my son in a swing because he's up past his bedtime. He's chewing on it right now. Oh, that's good. That's good. Parenting for the win. Item number two. Vet problems. What we've ran into is no one wants to see goats. Now, if you, depending on how you manage your herd, you don't need a vet until it's an emergency situation. But if you don't have a relationship with your vet, they won't see you in an emergency situation. So then what? The best advice I have is before you bring an animal home, start making phone calls and find someone that will see your goats. The way I built my relationship with my vet is I could do disbudding here on the farm. I just take my goats to the vet to get disbudded because that keeps my relationship active with the vet. So when I have an emergency, I can call them. When I find something that I want to keep on hand, but I need a prescription for, I can now call my vet and they'll call it in for me and it ships straight to my house and I don't have to go see them. This is going to be a really big deal starting next year, 2023, when uh, it's the FDA, yep. right? They are, uh, in their infinite wisdom, mm. government bureaucracy, has decided that we are no longer capable of buying antibiotics over the counter. So you're going to have to see a vet to get um, what and we would maybe consider routine treatment. You're going to have to get that as a prescription through your veterinarian starting next year. Not going to get into all that stuff, but having a relationship with a vet is going to be very important very soon. The, big, the biggest example of this that I can name off the top of my hand is penicillin. Right now, if you can find it, you can go to Tractor Supply or Rural King and buy penicillin off the shelf. Coming next year, that's no longer the case. And if you have a goat go down with pneumonia and you can't get a hold of a vet or you don't have a relationship with your vet, that's your go-to and that's about to be gone. So start making phone calls before you get an animal home. Find someone because it's about to get even harder. We travel somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour to see our veterinary, and I know there's people out there who have to travel much further than we do. It's not fun, it's not great, but it's what I have to do, and it works for us for now. Maybe, hopefully, we'll get some someone closer. I don't know. Item number three. Fencing is gonna become an obsession. And not just fencing, but your infrastructure in general. What kind of shelter do you need? How many pens do you need? What kind of 
style of fencing do you need? Do you need electric? Do you need woven wire? What's the difference between what they call woven wire and field fence? These are all questions that you're gonna have to know hopefully before you bring these little escape artists back to your place. Something someone told us when we brought our first skirts home. Skirts? 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 Something someone told us before we brought our first goats home. If you can throw a bucket of water at the fence and the water get through, a goat can get out. And man, is it true. Even with our little goats being able to slip through any crack and crevice in the fence, bigger goats are just as bad. Half the time they can jump a fence. We had one that could clear a four foot tall fence without a whole lot of trouble. Uh, he's no longer with us because it was more headache than it was worth. So, And not just fencing, he would jump gates as well. So we just decided to get rid of him because he was a pest. Someone's ate him at this point, to be honest. Farewell, Clyde. As well as fencing, what kind of barn, you know, what kind of shelters do you need? What kind of barn do you need? You know, goats hate water. They want to be dry. You can run into foot problems if they don't have access to enough dry bedding. You could end up with like hoof rot or abscesses in the feet. So they need access to plenty of dry area, whether that's like a three-sided structure or a barn. We put ours in the barn every night and lock them up for my peace of mind. I don't have to worry about stray dogs or coyotes. Because our livestock guardian, our livestock guardian dog is still in training. As you can hear him in the background yes. saying hello. Yes, doing his best. <laughs> doing his job. And we only have at the moment, what, 15 goats, right? Oh, I, I forget. But is I mean, it 13? I think it's, we had 14. I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a small herd compared to what a lot of other people have. Um, you know, eventually it's going to get bigger, but if you had a huge place, you can't just put them all in the barn. If you had a huge herd, you can't put them in the barn every night. So, you know, eventually this, this solution may not work well for us, but even if they're out and about more, they still need a good dry spot where they can go and get out of the weather and where they're not living in a swampy, marshy area that could be, uh, cause problems for their health. You also, at some point, are probably going to have to keep a buck separate from your does. With dairy goats, that's especially important because if you don't, your milk may taste nasty. A lot of times, that's why people describe goat milk as goaty. Is it's because the bucks around and bucks are smelly. So you want to keep your buck separate. So you need a separate pen for him. Along with that, he needs a buddy. And then all your does might need. You got to make sure everyone has a friend. Goats get very upset when they don't have friends. Goats are finicky. So fencing and infrastructure will become an obsession. You need possibly kidding pens to make sure the mom and the babies are bonding and keep the babies separate for a couple hours or a couple days, depending on what you want to do. Item number four. Feed. Feed can be a lot of things. You need to know, for one, how much you need for each animal, like pasture or hay in the winter or both. There's always hay in my barn. I keep hay year round. In the summer, I don't keep as much because most of the time when they come in from the green pastures, they've got plenty. How much pasture you need, how much hay you need. Where your hay is going to come from if you can't cut it on your own property. We cannot, so we are always searching for hay. Also, if you're going to feed grain. If you're feeding meat goats, you don't necessarily have to feed grain. Dairy goats, you need grain for milking ease as well as keeping supply up and make their milk. It gives them all the essential vitamins and yeah. nutrients and everything that makes goat milk taste so good, makes it so nutritious that dairy specific lactating dairy goat feed we think we think it's essential for helping i don't know our goats through that milking time they're, you know their bodies are under a lot of stress when they're when they're making milk and they're getting milk for their babies they're getting milk by us their bodies are under a lot of stress and it's important to keep their condition up keep you know keep that inflow of the good stuff that they need into going into their bodies. You don't want your dairy does to lose condition because they're putting so much injury into milk that they're losing their body fat and their body condition. Cause then you can run into other health problems. Um, I've tried two different brands. Both of them I have to kind of search for to find because in our area, a lot of people don't have dairy goats. So I've got a couple places I can buy from, but it took me a little time to find them and find a feed that I liked better than another and making sure they can keep it in stock for me. Luckily, we have several small farm stores that are willing to work with me, which makes it a lot easier. What are you doing? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Also, I like feeding chaff hay, which is a fermented, uh, fermented alfalfa hay. It is really good in the winter because it helps them stay warm. 
It helps them keep condition. It's easy to digest. If I have a goat go downhill, it's a lot easier for them to come back up with that because they're not having to put as much energy into digesting it because it's already starting to ferment. It's something that I find important, so I put in the effort to find it and keep it in stock. Also, you need to know what minerals your area is deficient in. In our area, it is copper, which goats need copper. We do a loose mineral that has a very high copper content. We also copper bolus usually twice a year because goats need copper and we are super deficient in it. Another one we're kind of deficient in is selenium. So a lot of times we're doing selenium. Um, I use a selenium paste. I know Heather does an injectable, so I need to check with her and see how she's like that. So Heather, if you're watching, leave it in the comment for me. But if you're also running multiple animals in your same area, um, like if you have sheep and goats or cows and goats that have access to the same mineral, make sure that you run a mineral that's good for all of them. In our case, we only have the goats in the pen right now. Item number five. Why are you doing that? What else am I supposed to do? I don't know. You're weirding me out. So number five, if you're going to love spending time with them for multiple reasons. One, you're going to become obsessed with checking to make sure they're they're okay. They're alive. They're alive. Because <laughs> like I said earlier, they're suicide machines. If there's a way to die, they're going to find it and challenge you. I spend a lot of time and sometimes my most relaxing time is sitting in the barn just listening to them chew their cud. If they're chewing cud, they're healthy, and they're doing good. If you're raising dairy goats, you're going to spend a lot of time sitting on the milk stand milking a goat. I take that as my alone time, and there's no children allowed in the barn while I'm milking. Me included. Yeah, he's not allowed down here either. <laughs> Sometimes Deacon gets gets away with it because he's so little, but I try not to even have him down here. That is me, me time, and half the time I come in and my face even smells like goat because I'm laying on a goat haunch milking a goat. My kids spend a lot of time with the goats because they just enjoy being around them, so they spend a lot of time obsessing with them as well. And I never expected to like them like I do. Uh, not that I don't like animals. I love animals. But even, I don't know, there's just something about a goat. And, uh, I don't know, dairy goats are almost like little dogs. You know, they just want to love on you and cuddle up to you. And I, they're they're just great. They're really, they're really just great. Even, you know, we, like, we give them a hard time for being hard to take care of. They're really not. Um, you got to be proactive and keep up with things. But they really are just so much fun to spend time with them. We, I think we're kind of partial because we pretty much only have dairy goats. We've had two meat goat mixes, and then now we have we have a couple meat goat mixes still. Yeah. But they favor that the dairy goat personality where they have a personality where they want to be interacted with. They want to be loved on. They want to be interacted with, which is what you need when you're spending, you know, time sitting behind them, milking them. They, you want them to be personable. And I spend a lot of time socializing them and loving on them and petting on them and talking to them so then too when i had to travel with them for uh mini pearl broke her leg we had to go to the vet because i wanted to make sure it wasn't a joint disease issue my goat didn't panic at the vets probably why my vet allows me to bring my goats is my goats don't panic they don't scream they don't yell they don't holler because they trust me to know i'm going to take care of them as part of this collaboration heather at sage and stone homestead decided she wanted to give away a copy of joel salton's book the pigness of pigs and to have a chance of winning that, all you need to do is leave a comment on this video and go watch the other Five Things videos on the other creators' channels and leave a comment there as well. Let them know that we sent you, but that's the important thing is we're all just wanting to interact with each other. It has nothing really to do with pigs, or I guess it's less about pigs and more about, um, I don't know, homesteading and growing your own food, taking care of things. And if, if you're into this kind of thing, if you're watching our stuff, if it's something you're into, I would think that it'd probably be something you enjoy. Because we wanted to get in on this giveaway action too, Megan and I, I guess, have decided to give away some of her. This is the first run of homemade goat milk lotion, handmade by uh, my lovely wife at the GWP Homestead. This is your first or second batch. I mean, like, you just started making it very recently. Deacon enjoyed his... Uh... Yeah, he got a bath and got lathered up in it, greased up and... So it's grease. I, I mean, it's not greasy. It's it's lotion. It's really nice. I say grease because I'm just weird. But it's really cool to win a copy. Uh, to win a copy. To have a chance at winning uh, some of this. Just leave a comment on our video and uh, we'll draw it out. Probably just have this open to the continental U.S. I don't know what it would be like to ship this elsewhere. Especially since it's a jar. It's a jar of kind of liquidy, gelatinous <laughs> lotion material. And I, I don't know. It just sounds so. We'll just leave that open to the other 48. I don't know. I think the other 
contest, collaboration, giveaway, whatever, is open to more people. We're going to do this just for us. I think Heather's going to draw the winner on December 18th. That's a Sunday. We're going to keep ours open for a few extra days since we're posting this video a little later on. But, hey, to win, leave a comment. To let us know if you liked the video. We're so glad you're here. I really appreciate our little man being a good sport, hanging out in the swing while we uh, tried to do this. And he was supposed to be in bed. He's supposed to be in bed right now, but he's not sleeping very well. So, uh, anyway. We're just doing our best around Send here. Send us some positive thoughts that he sleeps soon. <laughs> we thank you so much for being here. Thankful to everybody who's participated in this wonderful little collaboration. It's been a lot of fun getting to watch everybody else talk about their critters. Um, we love li living this life, doing what we do, trying to grow as much of our own food for our family as we can. And if it's the kind of thing you're into, we're glad to have you here. If you're new around here, make sure you click on that video to learn more about what we do. This is the playlist for the Five Things Collaboration, so watch it if you haven't already. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm Reagan, this is Megan, and uh, Little Man Deacon with the GWP Homestead. We'll see y'all soon. Bye, guys.